Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a full length real time tutorial on how to paint a watercolor bunny. This one's for you shark bunny. This is actually one out of a series of 12 baby farm animals included in my watercolor mastery membership. I actually painted these originally to create baby month cards, but they're also perfect for kids room decor or for your modern farmhouse nursery. Let's get started. For this project, I'm using Fluid 100 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. This is size six by eight and it's on a block. You'll need a pencil, a couple of brushes, and watercolor paints. Now for a complete list of supplies used in this tutorial, check out the list in the description below. All right, so to begin the sketch, I'm actually marking where those little ear tips are going first of all. Now in the image, the right ear is up a little bit higher than the left ear. You can decide to adjust this or make it more symmetrical if you want to, and if not, that's okay. I ended up erasing the mark on the right side and starting over. Something that's a little bit wider like this that has not a whole lot of contrast in it can be a little bit tricky to tackle when you're first starting out and sketching it. The unevenness in the ears can actually kind of throw you off visually. So just be slow and cautious and take your time with this initial sketch. Those large rounded cheeks, I'm fattening those out and marking a little V-shape for the nose for now. Of course it needs to be a little wider than that, there we go. And the nose is about halfway up the distance of those ears. And I actually see a heart shape connecting from the bottom of the nose up to the top of the head. Can you see that? So if you mark where the eyes come down towards the nose and up and around to the top of the head, it's this heart shape, really. So I'm sketching that on, and that's actually helping me see the overall size and dimension of our little bunny's head. And then I'm connecting the ears up and over after sketching that heart shape, making more sense of it all. A little bit of fur texture at the top there, and then the ear flares out and comes back down, capturing the inner ear. And so there's the overall head shape. I made the bottom part of the head a little bit too, too low, so I'm tightening that up slightly. You'll want to compare the bottom of the head to the tips of the ears to see how far up the head needs to go. And also compare those measurements with where your nose is located. It's constantly a process of checking and rechecking the distances between key areas in your drawing. And the body is really small. It's only about a third of the width of the whole head. There's an inner line here where the muzzle kind of divides. You can darken up the nose a little bit. Kind of like the piglet painting, this one does not have a lot of contrast in color and in value. So where you do see dark shadows, you're going to want to play those up, and you're definitely going to want to preserve a lot of highlights in this one. When you're sketching, just get your main points on. All you need is enough information to get started with painting. Now those little feet are hidden in a lot of grass here. So if the shapes look a little confusing to you, that's okay. I'm just drawing little rounded shapes for those feet and not concerning myself with the bottom part of the foot because that's gonna be covered up with the grass. I am planning on painting that grass later and that'll help it look more natural and connected with the environment. All right, so we just need to sketch on the eyes. And on a bunny, of course, the eyes are on the side of the head. I'm gonna go in and darken some of these lines up and make them more decisive more cartoon-like almost, just so they're easier for you guys to see and we don't lose them under the paint. Just 
So I'm really darkening up these lines around the cheeks. And this one comes up to the top of the head, connecting that heart shape. So as always, I start my sketch really light with not quite as confident of pencil marks. And then as I get more confident that I'm making accurate decisions with my lines, I darken those up. That's generally the process I follow when sketching something freehand like this. And so you'll see I'm just filling out these lines and making them more accurate, more tight. Really liking how this little guy is looking. For the eyes, it's just this upward curve shape. And we don't see the entire eye. We just see it from the side. And so it's just going to be a sliver, a tiny little oval. If you want to play up the eyelashes and make those a little bigger than you even see in the image, you can do that and that'll look really cute. Just drawing those white outlines around the eyes and just filling in the eyes and preserving a highlight towards the top. I'm also sketching on these little horizontal markings where the whiskers emerge from. You see this in things like cats and dogs and rabbits too. And I'm just darkening up between those front legs. And I actually spent a little extra time on this sketch compared to some of the other animals. And that was because I wanted to make sure, first of all, that you guys could see and follow along every step of this. But also I just wanted to make sure I had nice decisive lines to do the painting. I want to paint fairly loosely with this one and use strong brush strokes. So there we go. There's the little bunny sketch. We are ready to start painting. I'm taking my half inch Princeton Neptune flat wash brush, dipping it in the water, and I'm going to start by using clean water and painting it all over the bunny. Because the colors are very subtle, the values are really subtle in this one. We're going to start with the wet and wet technique and just drop in some basic colors and values just to get an initial wash on the paper. Sometimes if you're just not sure how to start or where to start, just getting some color down can really help you. So while that's still wet, I'm taking some burnt sienna, mixing it up with some water in my palette and dropping that in in the center of the head. It looks really dark and that's okay. I am going to be exaggerating the reddish hints in this bunny somewhat. Since I see in the photo a lot of green reflected in the bunny, that's not something necessarily that I want to include or exaggerate in my painting. So I'm just going to be playing up the more natural colors in the bunny's fur. This reddish brown and the earthy yellow tones in the bunny. So you can see I've just very loosely and quickly painted in the center of the head, wet and wet and I'm pulling that color up into the ears as well, just avoiding the areas that are white around the bunny's eyes. It's important, in, even in these initial washes, to be planning ahead for your lightest values and just painting around those, making sure that you're not taking away the white of the paper too soon. It's a lot easier to paint around it now than to have to try to pull that white back out later. 
So I'm really just squinting my eyes at the reference photo. I'm introducing some yellow ochre here and just looking at the overall values and painting in these mid-tone values that are actually going to go darker in some areas. But for now, it's all kind of this light mid-tone. Painting around all the highlights just so we know where those are going to be later and can carefully avoid those as we continue to pump up our values and colors. Dip your brush in the water if the paint gets too dark and pigmented and you can easily and quickly just water that down and make the value lighter just with a little dip in your water. So there's our first wash already. Now I'm dipping in some ultramarine. This is a warm blue. I want to introduce some cool shadows right away and allow those colors to blend wet and wet into the belly. So I'm using that on the underside of the belly, which is actually white fur, but when it's in the shadow, it looks more bluish or greenish. And I'm doing the same thing on the underside of the chin, using that ultramarine to paint the shadow color. My colors are not really anything like the reference photo at this point, and that's okay. Like I said, I want to kind of adjust and change the colors according to my own idea for how I want it to look. And this is something you get to do as the artist. You can choose to change the colors as much as you want. You can change anything. It's totally up to the artist. The artist's prerogative. So with those nice light blue shadow shapes blocked in, I'm really happy with how it's all blending together softly, wet and wet. And I'm adding some of those blue shadows under the ears. The inner side of this ear is a dark brown, so I'm using my Burnt Sienna again. Still a fairly medium tone. And darkening up the ear with one swipe of the brush with that Burnt Sienna. As I mentioned at the beginning, guys, this tutorial and 11 other baby farm animals are available when you sign up to become a Watercolor Mastery member. Just go to emilyolsonart.com to check out all the available tutorials that are included in your membership. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, let's get back to the video. And now I'm combining the Burnt Sienna and Yellow Ochre on my palette. And I'm going over the center of the head again with another wash in a darker value. Remember that watercolor will dry lighter. As you can see, that initial wash looked way too dark and as it lightened, it looked almost exactly like the reference photo. So you may be surprised at how dark you have to keep going. And don't be afraid to go fairly dark even in your first wash, just remembering that it will dry lighter. This just takes experimentation and lots of practice with your paint to start to understand what it'll look like when it dries, and just to get used to that. So with the second layer, I'm just reinforcing my values, going darker in the center of the head and on the cheeks, where I see those browns and light tan colors in our bunny in the reference photo. But as I said, I'm going darker, playing that up even more, making it a little more brownish rather than tan in my rendition of the bunny. Using this flat brush is really fun. It's so freeing. You find that you're going to move your brush with more freedom and quickness and it'll have a more spontaneous and loose look overall versus using a pointed round brush for everything. Going in again with another layer of ultramarine, darkening up my blue shadow shapes. We're approaching the stage in the painting that I like to call the ugly phase. <laughs> Just about every painting I do has one of these, or several, or maybe the entire thing is ugly for most of the entire process. And that can be a little disarming. You can be discouraged really early on if you think, oh no, what am I doing? This isn't looking right. But see it through to the end. I'll tell you guys over and over again. Just finish it. Keep at it. Keep adding layers. And trust the process. These initial washes do look kind of ugly at first, and that's because it's not finished. 
Once we start adding details like the eyes, the whiskers, the little pink nose, all of that, it'll really start to come together. So just be patient with yourself and work quickly and confidently. And if it doesn't turn out, you can always do it again. That's the worst that could happen, right? Painting this really dark shadow between those legs and using the side of my brush to produce separations and fur. This is indigo, by the way, my dark, dark blue. I tend to not use black for most of my paintings. I usually use indigo and burnt umber to produce black or some combination of darks. And the reason is that black is completely opaque. It's not at all transparent and indigo is semi-opaque. So you'll have a little bit more of a pleasing watercolor look when you're using transparent or semi-transparent colors like this. Especially when you're using these colors for layering. If they are opaque, it's just gonna look muddy. So something you'll want to watch out for when you're choosing your paint colors is just how transparent they are. And of course, if it's a tube of paint, it will definitely tell you if it's transparent or semi-transparent. I'm really pumping up these shadows here and it's still looking super ugly. So <laughs> just bear with me, be patient. I'm using indigo, burnt sienna, and just pulling down this color wet and wet, layering and layering here. You'll wanna make sure that you have a good balance of color. If you're using something bright like burnt sienna, which is a very reddish brown, it can be somewhat overpowering. So try to balance that out in other areas of the painting. I'm using that burnt sienna to paint in the lower lip to pump up the color in the nose. And then I am introducing a little bit of the green that I see reflected in the ground. This is a leaf green by Holbein and I'm throwing that in the chin and as I said, if you use a bright color like this, you want to balance it out in other areas of the painting. So I am throwing this into the ears and just introducing it as sort of a shadow color in some of these other areas on the painting. I'm working really fast. You can see I'm not speeding up the footage at all. I'm just painting very quickly. And I have switched to my size 8 round brush just so I can get some more pointed details at this point. smoothing out some of those wet washes. Adding a little bit of indigo in the shadows in the ears. And now you can see that my painting is quite a bit darker than the reference photo. And I mentioned before that this was intentional. Now for the eye, I'm using indigo. I'm painting that in fairly quickly, just avoiding the highlight at the top. Playing up those eyelashes over the top and underneath. The size 8 brush holds a lot of paint. You notice I didn't have to re-wet it or dip it in the paint again, and I had enough paint on it to carry me through both eyes quite adequately. And any that's left over, I'm dabbing into the mouth and the nose. I'm rinsing that out slightly, and then grabbing some burnt sienna and mixing it in with the watered down indigo that's still on my brush, and darkening up even more these shadow shapes under the ears. All of this is still wet, so just be aware that anything you lay down over the top is gonna to blur out. It's not gonna be the phase for putting in details because those will just get washed away. But this is a good opportunity if you want to still add some more smooth and blended layers to work wet and wet while your paper's still wet. So here I'm darkening up between the head again. This is helping balance out those shadow shapes on the belly. And I'm using a quick upward stroke of the brush to create some fur texture on the top of the head in between the eyes. Now we're starting to see some hope for this painting. It was going through a very ugly phase for a while, but now it's starting to really come to life. And I feel more optimistic that this could actually turn out kind of cute. As we continue to dab on fur texture, I'm exaggerating it a little bit and making it sort of cartoony. And I really like how that's looking on this particular image. And I just took a swipe of the brush to darken on the inner corners or the outside corners of those eyes. Still preserving the white around the eyes. This left ear needs a little bit of work. I'm gonna take a combination of indigo and burnt sienna and splay the bristles of my brush and add a shadow 
using fur texture with those short, quick, parallel brush strokes. And I'm changing up the direction my brush is moving just depending on what I'm seeing in the reference photo. And also just to add a variety of brush strokes to the painting. And with some quick brush strokes here, I'm pumping up the shadow shapes one more time. All very loose. You have to be confident with those brush strokes if you're going to paint in this style. And now I'm throwing in some hooker's green for the grass. As I mentioned before, those little feet are hard to see in the reference photo because they're covered up with the grass. So we're just going to go ahead and paint the grass in. Use your round brush for this. The flat brush can work too if you turn it on its edge, but I find a round brush works perfectly for things like grass blades. I'm using some permanent green number one, a little bit of my terra verde and my hooker's green. These are just all the greens that are on my palette. When you're painting grass, it's, it's good to include a combination and a variety of different greens just to mix it up. So once you have a pleasing shape with your green, you can decide to add in some more shadows if you want to. This is terra verde and a little bit of turquoise blue. Throwing in some darker values, indicating separation between the grass blades and shadows in between. This is helping it look a little bit more realistic. Our bunny is looking like he has some weight to him, like he's sitting on the ground. You can feel the heaviness of his little body. Now we still need to add a few finishing details here. So I'm mixing up some of the burnt sienna and indigo that's on my palette, creating kind of this neutral brown, and I'm painting in the whiskers above the eyes. Try to do these in one complete swooping brush stroke. Use the tiny tip of your round brush, and you can use a smaller brush if that's easier for you. And so I'm using this brown to paint all of the whiskers on. You could also decide to make them white with white gouache or a gel pen, something like that. Continuing to reload my brush and add some more whiskers on each side. I'm just adding a little bit of texture with the tip of my brush, some more fur texture along the mouth. It looked a little bit too bland. And then I'm grabbing one of my pinks. This is a Lizarin Crimson watered down and adding some pink in the middle of the nose. A little bit of texture above the nose. And you can see this particular painting is quite a departure for me. I'm really not following my reference photo completely perfectly or closely at all. I'm changing up the colors, exaggerating my brush strokes, but you can see it's really looking fun. It's looking like an illustration. It's perfect for children. It's perfect for the purpose that I'm creating it for, which is for baby month cards. And so I'm really, really enjoying painting in this looser style with this one. And having the larger size certainly helps with that. Gives you more freedom of movement. Adding one more dark shadow shape under that belly. And a little bit more of that leaf green, suggesting the reflection of the grass up in his belly. This is your chance to add any more broad brush strokes you want to maybe smooth out certain areas and add some balance to your composition. And there is our finished bunny.